Ma'am, you are a teacher, a social activist, a playwright. You have founded the Mustard Seed Art Company, which celebrated 30 years of its existence this year. You have written over 30 plays. Ma'am, why theatre? Uh, I believe in the power of art and uh, theatre is one art which I think offers a great deal. It has the writing of the text, of the script and it has the idea of performance which uh, not all the other arts to do of her. So it fascinates, fascinates me. It is a very really all embracing kind of an art. It gives the playwright space for very quiet thinking and writing. And then once the performance begins, then it is a whole lot of other people to interpret that. And then there is live contact with the audience. All that is a whole universe of art and experience. So it does fascinate me. Now, what kind of theatre excites you? See, that's a very a difficult question to answer because theatre offers so much. I can't say this and that because as a theatre group also we experiment. So we could try different kinds and we might do something that interests us without really knowing what genre it is or whether it is a particular style. Something that we find interesting. But I must say that uh, themes that are universal, that are, I don't know, more than just superficial, they interest me. And also, if the audience is able to connect, that makes it perfect. So, local stories do give me a whole lot of, you know, food for thought. And what's the first hope that gets a new place started for you? Is it like an idea or a theme or a social condition prevailing at that time? No, which needs to be made aware of. See, I uh, cannot answer that question because each time it has been different. Uh, at times it has been a person who has been in my uh, imagination for decades until the play came into existence. I'll give you two examples. One is Abhi Favila. And the final video play that was written was called Kato Bebaji. Another one is Rabindranath Tagore. So that fascination with these characters eventually took the shape of the film. But not always. Sometimes it might be something I've read in the papers. Sometimes it might be just an image that has grabbed me. So, it's a whole lot of different things. And I, I, I don't really see myself as a social activist. I'm just, you know, somebody who thinks that uh, there are nice stories all around and one needs to bring them up to public notice creatively. 30 years is a long time and to be consistent for 30 years. It's not an easy task, writing play after play, directing play after play. I'm sure it takes a lot of trouble, a lot of hard work. And what kept you going? Uh, for one, other people have also written plays. I haven't been the only one. I've written many, but a few other members of the group have also, over the years, written plays. Mm -hmm. And they have also, at times, uh, directed them. There have been members of the group who have tried their hand at directing, and some of them have been very successful. Uh, 
Why did it run into so many years? It wasn't planned that way at all. We just did a play and we enjoyed it. And then when we met next, usually somebody would say, so when do we do the next play? So one of the things that kept us going was the enthusiasm of the, of the group, of the cast. If that had, you know, waned, I think you know, the group would have died out. But uh, it's group energy and that counts. It counts a great deal. Also, I think, um, well, the fact that life is dramatic. There is so much that is happening and it is uh, worthy of being noticed and written about and dramatized. And sometimes they, as you say, some of them are issues, some of them are events. And uh, you feel that uh, they are there to be noticed. And so we notice them. So why it's gone into 30 years, I don't know, just one step at a time, one day at a time, that's how most people move. It is, it is. It does seem to be. The have changed. Oh yes, they change all the time. They change all the time. And is it difficult? Yes, it managing is. Managing a new cast all together or yeah. finding the right actors? It is difficult. Sometimes actors grow into very good actors, extremely good performers, and then life takes them away. Because either they migrate or they are raising a family and they cannot come and things like that. And personally, I do feel quite bereft when you know a confident actor leaves. But then I am also very much aware that the group is and needs to be fluid. And so there's always new blood coming in, there are always new voices, new ideas. And that is a kind of replenishing. Maybe that is one reason why 30 years have gone now. Because new people have come and it hasn't uh, um, stagnated because new minds and new personalities have uh, taken uh, new initiatives. So, one of the, at least the way I see it, one of the uh, goals of the group is to offer a safe and exciting space for people who are interested in drama. So some people come and go, and then new people come, and that's as it should be. How do you be successful in finding new talent? I mean, isn't it a risk bringing in new talent and rather relying on the veterans? Nothing that is worthwhile comes without risk. So. People come, people go. Life is like that. And uh, sometimes it's time for somebody to leave and move on. And it is time, the right time, I feel, for new people to come and for them to explore their own potential and, you know, look at life through their own prism. So, I see that one of the fundamental uh, functions of this group is to welcome new people. We don't go looking for somebody who will be perfect. We create a space where people will discover what they are, so they become right for that play or for that role. We don't go scouting around for people who are exceptional or great. We are just to whoever comes. 
Among your recent play, Hold Up the Sky, revolves around the life of Madame Mao. And what fascinated you about Madame Mao? I mean, you could have written about Chairman Mao, but Madame Mao. See, Madame Mao was a theatre person. That was the first thing that grabbed me. And I'm generally very keen on pondering uh, issues of power. And I see power taking different kinds of shapes and avatars. She began thinking of theatre as a medium for emancipation self-empowerment and the emancipation of the peasants and as she herself said women in China the you know invisible amongst the invisible the pe the peasants but eventually the route that she mapped out for herself I thought was a travesty of her original plan, of the map that she had set out for herself. And in a sense, what she did makes me extremely angry because she uh, did the exact opposite of what she set out to do and she used drama to gag people, to rob people of uh, their freedom of thought, freedom of speech and above all what really infuriates me is that she completely shall we say ignored and crushed the opportunity that theatre offers for group energy and for collaborative living she became the you know, total boss who allowed only eight model operas. But that's ridiculous. In a country like China that was so extremely diverse and culturally so rich, this one woman grabs political power and completely narrows down the limits of culture that really annoyed me and uh, she became like an icon of what can be and what according to me must not be. I'm not really a political person so Mao wasn't really my you know, target oh, but she was. Ma'am, over the years, definitely audiences have changed. Uh, have you noticed any difference with the audience, say, 20 years back and the audience that we have now? See, our audiences are never very large. Okay. Very large audiences are for the theatres in other languages, the regional languages. Uh, I think many of the people who might have liked theatre in English and I don't usually call it English theatre because we are doing from where I stand local theatre but in English many of those people love music so the art of their choice it seems to me is music and dance over the years our audiences have grown and there are some who have begun to understand now what we do and uh, they, they, they are being now more enthusiastic and they are fascinated by the kind of stuff that we do because we do experimental stuff sometimes. Ours is certainly not commercial theatre and in that sense 
it gives us a little freedom. We don't really go by how much you know we will make at the end of the day, and so we don't follow any strict commercial models. And that freedom is something that all of us in the group completely enjoy and appreciate. So our audiences are growing, and they are certainly growing more uh, um, appreciative and more enthusiastic. So we do the best. I enjoy it. Now you are a teacher of drama and playwriting. So how has your teaching influenced your writing? The, the experiences you have as a teacher of See, as a student of drama, I certainly learned a great deal about the craft of writing. When I study what other people have written, I am a little, you know, analytical about the craft of writing. So in that sense, yes. Had I not read plays or studied plays, I would probably have written, if I did write at all, I would probably have written something very different. So in that sense, yes, being a student of literature fed into my writing and my uh, experience of theatre. But uh, I must also tell you that my experience as a theatre person, impacted in enormous ways my uh, career as a teacher. And my whole experience of what it means to be a teacher was greatly transformed by the stage and by the uh, Uh, how do you think English drama in Goa is dying? It is certainly not dying. It is uh, newborn. It is certainly not dying. Now there are, a few years ago there was very little drama in English. Now there is more. There are individuals who start and there are groups that start. But for some reason perhaps they move away and so that you know, was a it has lasted, yes. Group. But now I think there are individuals and perhaps a time may come when their initiatives will also take more lasting shapes. I have no clue. But I, even personally I know people who are doing theatre in the world. How do you scope for good in the ah, Yes, of course there is. Of course there is. But then, uh, it would also need good marketing. It would need, need maybe somebody with a better sense of uh, advertising or greater mobility, maybe, which I must confess our group doesn't have. And uh, perhaps one may, main reason why it doesn't have are my own limitations. So if there is someone who is very good at that, then uh, I don't see any reason why it won't last or why the whole genre in, in uh, Goa will not uh, flower. How do you, uh, if given a chance, would you like to perform outside the rocks on a bigger stage? You know, uh, I think so, so, yes. I think it would be good, not just for me, but exposure for the cast, for the performers. I think most of them will love it. But um, there are economic constraints. Yes. We've just done it a couple of times in small ways. But they've been wonderful experiences. There was somebody in Bangalore many years ago who was having something called a Peace Festival mm -hmm. and he invited different kinds of performers and he invited us as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went and we did this play that I think you uh, know very well. Uh, the Case of the Missing Peace and it's on the theme of peace. 
in a very big uh, open stage in a, in a Maidan in Bangalore mm -hmm. with a very, you know, sort of a diverse audience. So, yes, very big event. Oh, it was a wonderful experience. We look forward. Maybe a day will come when you know the group will perform. Maybe in the Prithvi Theatre or Christ University in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. They have a wonderful uh, auditorium, okay. you know, state of the art kind of thing. So, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Oh, which is your favorite queen? I never know. I never know. People ask me that, but I never know because each play is different and each play brings with, him, with it its own rewards and its own uh, learning. Um, it's all challenges as well. So I have not ever answered that question. I don't know. Ma'am, after being such a, what do you say, a renowned playwright, <laughs> I, really, I consider you one of, I mean, I consider you a very great personality, but you're still so down to earth and so humble and so approachable. I mean, the frog in the wells. I mean, I'm just saying, ma'am, yeah. success hasn't, you know, really got into your head of Kimberly this is very small success no ma'am and I must not ever think that it is earth shaking this is just one person who has done what everybody tries to do who has touched time. lives and inspired people anyway I am uh, not very aware of any great achievements but I like to live a simple life I like to do what needs to be done I don't like too much uh, publicity. You lose your genuine self, I feel. So if I had it my way, I would have been even quieter than I am now. But it doesn't always work that way. Yes, my love and his amara. Ma'am, what advice do you have for playwrights starting out? What? How would you? If we want to carry this, we do not want. Theater, mm -hmm. English theatre dying. So, what would you say go about it? See, I would say, if you want to write, write! Make a passion out of it. You can't wish something into existence unless you put your heart and your sweat behind it. So you want to write, you jolly well have to write and you have to write consistently and you have to say to yourself this is going to be better this time than it was last time, the mistakes I committed last time, I'm going to avoid this time. So you jolly well have to write. Any art is a craft that needs to be polished, needs to be perfected and it doesn't happen overnight. So there's great scope for writing plays because not much of it is happening in Goa in the English language. Mm -hmm. um, oh yes, there's a lot of scope. And uh, students of literature like the uh, teachers, young teachers of uh, drama, I think they would be best equipped all the details to write good plays. Even some people do, you know, in schools, they do try, but then it remains at that level for some reason. I was very uh, happy to be a part of the case of the missing piece, and that is the only play of yours I acted in. Is no, you did, did in one of us. That was very memorable. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you so you. much for Thank your time. You. All the best. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.